So first thing first, Einar, how are you? Uh, doing good. Um... Yeah, a bit chronically uh, busy, uh, I would say, but I guess that's a, a luxurious problem uh, for people in in my in my uh, profession. Sure. Um, well, before we get to what keeps you busy at the moment, uh, I would like to jump back a little bit. Now, there's something you mentioned in one of the videos for uh, for this new album, which is uh, the hunting of songs. Mm. Now, when did you first start hunting for songs? Um, I think that's uh, intuitively. I, I think that uh, goes back to uh, yeah, very far back in time. Uh, I've always kind of have uh, had a, a very um, intuitive, um, uh, almost visual uh relation to to sound um uh, sound and songs and and creativity uh, walking is sort of my my muse in a way that's when i hear hear the songs or or see the songs and of course when you when you go into this um more specifically um, zooming into a certain thing to to tune into its mm. sound or you know so, some some things or or themes or objects they are so have such a strong image to it that i um, automatically hear the sound of it in in a way um but but actively uh, doing this i would say um came about uh, yeah 20, 20 years ago or something okay. like that and it, like you say it's very difficult to to pinpoint exactly because it's very intuitive but do you know can you kind of kind of describe what you felt in a way well and then still do when you take these walks and kind of describe how how some of those those yeah the environment kind of inspires you in that way well um don't think it's uh, necessarily that uh, that complicated to uh, it, it is in well in in some ways at least the intuitive uh, the, the things that come naturally uh, is simply just um, um, not overthinking it it just comes uh, in a way of course especially when you when you have a focus on on something mm. specific if I'm working on on something specific it's um that's kind of a constant process and uh, it's like uh, s uh sending out uh, thousands of of uh, magnets or, or something like that and and um yeah it, it's like um, opening up on on your it's sort of turning um your receptors on on full volume yeah. uh, in a sense um but of course uh, if you tap into the uh, the more animistic um spiritual uh, effects of it then then it's more like um i would say more like an active act that you do you mm -hmm. you, um, you go out to um it's basically the same same thought or or idea, but you you basically go actively more into uh, uh, one specific uh, thing and and try to tune into it in in various different ways um, to uh, to find to find that sound or song or or uh, uh, frequency of that object or or theme. And what I find interesting, especially about uh, your story in this, is obviously, like you say, 20 years ago, this this kind of started. Um, and you're not the same person as you were back then. You know a, a whole lot more about uh, Nordic cultural traditions and, and the instrumentation and everything. You, you've, you've learned along the way. So has this process for you become uh, easy in a way? Mm, no, <laughs> definitely not. But yeah, as you say, of course you you grow. Um, uh, but the t so in order to continue to grow, the task doesn't get uh, easier. It becomes right. more difficult because you go more into the depth of both yourself and and uh, and what, whatever it is you, um, uh, yeah, whatever it is I'm working with. Um, 
but um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, I, I'm not a person that is very comfortable or, or uh, enjoy very much repeating myself uh, mm -hmm. too much, you know, wow. uh, it's, it's, I don't. I don't like that process to become stale. So I, I really enjoy the fact, and I guess that's been a very fruitful thing that that, uh, that I am lucky enough to to constantly be be um, challenged uh, mm -hmm. and um, on on different types of project, and and that I do many different things. I I do sure. whether or not it's doing lectures or or. Um, working working with music in different uh, formats or or i don't know it keeps me on my toes and it it, uh, it uh, sort of feeds that uh, that constant need to to evolve and grow mm -hmm. um, i guess both as a human and a, a, as a musician and composer well let's if, if we look towards the new album like uh, which is i think white raven is the translation uh, correct. Um, because the, the previous album was Scout, where where it's it was more uh, your own songs in a way. It was a different sort of expression, I suppose. Did that influence kind of what came out for the new album? I think everything you do uh, influence you and and uh, is sort of put in that uh, storage of of uh, experience. And of course, yeah. Everything I do uh, uh, sort of, uh, 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 yeah, it adds to that progress, uh, progression and, and knowledge and, and skill set, I, I would say. Mm -hmm. For many, um, well, the Skald album was, was kind of a, a result of, um, well, I think it was in in 2013. That's the first time I started doing these lectures and and workshops where I I took in order to demonstrate instruments. I, I started to to make uh, like acoustic renditions of of Wodruna songs, and and that sort of led on to creating different pieces. And and some I created for for uh, for the TV show Vikings, um, and. Um, I don't know. I really enjoyed that working in that format, and and also people seem to enjoy it. So the Skull album was kind of a, um, uh, yeah, felt felt like the right thing to do, both because a lot of people were asking for it, um, and and um, it felt like a good exploration to do because, as a, for instance, as a singer uh, working with that um, that format uh, really pushed me to. Um, to yeah, to to explore my voice also, mm -hmm. and and um, in a different way, and um, so so I guess that 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 whole process uh, has definitely uh, brought something new to to my both my my um, my um, uh, creative uh, process as well as the the performing aspects of of everything. And it's interesting that you mentioned that the giving lectures that that kind of had an impact as well because in, in the first uh, uh, promo video for for the record you mentioned uh, how important it is to have certain roots and uh, to, to have a foundation on which to build things and I just suppose this is in somewhat because I also read a different post where you mentioned a certain uh, academic uh, research is necessary or that, that you need a certain base of, of uh, to to get to an understanding, so yeah. Oh, go ahead if you. If you... Yeah, yeah, for me, for me, it's important to uh, to have a solid ground uh, before mm -hmm. I go into the more intuitive process, uh, um, like finding out what we know and how we know it, basically, uh, to determine their their uh, its truthfulness uh, in a sense, and and that that gives you solid ground. That gives you a very good starting point. Uh, before going into the creative process. Uh. In that sense, because uh, when it comes to these type of things, especially uh, old historical traditions, uh, so, some of it is always hidden in mystery. Some of the, some of the things we just don't know. Mm. But is, is accuracy, is that very important for you? 
In, in some uh, cases, it, it, accuracy is important, but uh, as you say, there are <laughs> there are so, so many gaps in in mm. what we know about these things, and and um, uh, at the same time, there are so many clues um, and ways of finding out uh, certain things, and 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 to that extent. I would say I have an advantage in, in terms of uh, the musicology of, of things because since uh, I both have the academic process um, uh, as a foundation, um, I also have um, practical experience mm -hmm. and I, I have uh, knowledge of the logic of performance, the logic of um, creation. Um, and, and also a practical knowledge on how things actually work. Uh, so I can, uh, that allows me to, uh, to try out uh, mm. many of these academic hypotheses. Um, so I think that multidisciplinary approach to it uh, has led me, uh, at least in some cases, to, um, to quite new uh, revelations in, in a way and, and to certain things that I can defend um, also academically uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. the 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 authenticity of um, or the logics behind, because certain things are like in terms of performance, certain things are timeless. They are universal. You do mm -hmm. and cultivate what works when in front of an audience. That's that's sort of a a core rule um, when performing. Um, so applying all of these things. Um, I think can be fruitful and it's perhaps also the reason why also academia or parts of academia is uh, interested in in what i have to say and I, mm. I sometimes give lectures at universities and stuff like that also for that that reason to to right. get that multidisciplinary um, aspect of it also into academia and I heard you say um, that uh, you went and mentioned the word timeless, that it, it's not even about just Norse mythology or, or the things that you're interested in. It can be applied similarly to, to a lot of those uh, kind of cultural traditions or myths. Of, or, or... Yeah, yeah, if you go far enough back in time, whether or not it's death mythology or, or uh, folklore or, or mm. traditions, or if it's the music itself, when you go far enough back in time, you see that uh, it, 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 it seems to come from one specific. Uh, um, well, the prince, even though the wrapping is is different for each sure. culture, as it logically is in a nature-based cult uh, culture, um, the the sort of the core ideas are are very much uh, global. I would say, um, and and also in terms of of music, when you go far enough back in time, you see how much these. Uh, how much uh, how striking the similarities are uh, within the tonality rhythms poetic traditions and so on it's um so um yeah I even though i work within a sort of a norse um um mm -hmm. package um the, the content within that package is um or a lot of it is very much uh, globally and uh, timeless uh, uh, things and this universality, and especially, I agree with in terms of music. That I mean, I, I don't understand your language, but I, I can still feel something when I hear the music. Um, but but having the universality is is that in essence uh, where you're looking? I don't know if this is the right way to phrase. It. Is, is that where you're looking for wisdom in a way that that there are certain elements that can tell us about human existence that can tell us even to this day even though we live in the 20th uh, 21st century um, that it can still hold truth for us is, is that kind of absolutely and my my focus with i guess all my music is is uh, to highlight exactly those things those mm -hmm. things that still carry uh, carry value and still resonate still um, have relevance uh, as much as it did when it was a living tradition uh, in a way. And I guess the any nature-based culture, wherever it comes from, is a result of its, its surroundings, its resources in that given place, uh, the people that live there and so on. Uh, that's what shapes that culture. And then like in, in my case, I still live in that place, you know? Uh, so there are, there are a lot of, um, 
a lot of uh, there is a lot of wisdom uh, connected to that uh, um, that kind of cultural memory that's mm -hmm. encapsulated in simply in our uh, surroundings and and how how this um, how people um, related to that in a sense um, and and this is a people who who um, had much bigger knowledge about, about especially nature than we we uh, do today or at least on on certain aspects sure. of it of course some things we know better and some some things they know better so for me it's not like this romantic idea that everything was so much better <laughs> back then some things were better some things weren't in any case it's 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 about learning from the past and mm. uh, um, in in sort of the the, uh, the hope of doing things even better that right. should be the gold uh, not to copy whatever they did and and like you say you always try to challenge yourself as well so with this last record is there is something new you've discovered or something uh, that you've kind of realized about not maybe yourself maybe about the music you make maybe about the traditions you study absolutely um I would say I've learned things on all of the things you mentioned, uh, and uh, I guess I, I go really in a, into these things with with both feet and and my whole self in a way uh, when I go into this process. And a lot of, the, uh, of course, these deep dives they uh, they give me a lot of new insight and and kind of feels almost like an initiation in, mm. in a way that. Uh, um, yeah, like I say in, in hunting the songs, uh, if you know the song for it, you you know it in a way. This this might be difficult to describe it because well, there's a number of songs on the record. When do you find a song? When when do you uh, do you think okay now this is this is, we've got something here? Oh, that can uh, that can uh, that feeling can come. Um, the second I hear like the okay, okay. Or, or see it, but but on the other hand, sometimes uh, I only get a glimpse of it, or or um, yeah, so, some songs I've spent like six seven years <laughs> in create creating in a way like it, suddenly the the uh, the right piece that uh, that makes it all uh, f come together. Uh, comes and and sometimes that that is uh oh, i see my uh yeah sometimes it, it, that, come that, back in a minute yeah sometimes that is um uh yeah comes very easy and, and natural and something sometimes that takes a lot of time um so there, there's no no specific rule i would say i think my camera is freezing up a little bit isn't it yeah my back again. I, I can put on a different camera if that. Is it? It's very um, laggy, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, a little chopped up. I'll see if this is better. Because I'm using my phone for this recording because the quality is better, but for some reason the Wi-Fi is weird then. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I think this is better, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah of course. Um, well, in that sense, then, which of the songs gave you the most trouble? Which was the the longest kind of process or the, the most difficult process to, to arrive at the end point? Uh, it's a difficult question uh, because, yeah, some, some of the songs um, are, um, have been with me for, for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so finding the right, yeah, even even if you know um, what you want to say, um, it can be difficult to find out uh, how to say it uh, and vice versa. Sometimes uh, um, it's just a feeling uh, and uh, that is not very specific uh, in terms of what you actually want to say. So that, that process is uh, can be quite challenging. I would say, uh, of course, the title track was uh, um, mm. the song Kvitram. That was a, a slow birth uh, okay. kind of song. It, it was so many elements of it were, were there from, from a very early point, but sort of pinpointing the exact expression and, and um, 
yeah, the, the exact form was, was uh, something that took a lot of work and, and, and then suddenly everything clicked and, and uh, it became, yeah, the, became very obvious in a way when it finally found its form. Well, let's talk about that particular song then, because um, does it hold any special connection to you? Because the, the title is also kind of, the, I think, your, your stage name or nickname or um, so. And so did, did it hold any sig uh, special significance in that sense? And also, what was it? What kind of uh, made it click into place? Well, of course, it it, it has a personal aspect to it, uh, both because uh, the thematics of it uh, describes a, a very human process as well, which right. of course uh, it draws it closer to to the human uh, in a way, both performing it and and listening to it. In a sense, so, um, but but I have to say it's 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 not a song uh, named after me, okay. and it's not an album named after me. It's more uh, inspired by the same thoughts and ideas and inspiration that led me to take the name in the, in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, um, so. Um, I guess my, my sort of fascination and almost totemic relationship with with the Raven as a, as a uh, is is something that is um, yeah it's something that is very closely I would say this, those processes are are. Uh, described and and kind of the core thematics of the song as well not necessarily about me but uh, about that tradition of of connecting with with uh, animals in in that sort of sense and and of course the white raven or or these white animals in in general um not only in norse culture but it, that's also a kind of a global phenomenon um both with ravens and and other animals, elephants or lions or, or reindeer, etc. They have this um, mythic, prophetic uh, role um, of, of bringing something new uh, or, or uh, a messenger of, of some sort. So I guess it's a, it's a mix of many different tradition that, uh, traditions that, uh, that uh, is sort of baked into that song. Right. This might be, a, uh, I don't know if this is a good question. And if you don't have an answer for it, that's fine. But um, can you can you share maybe something uh, personal from, from maybe when you were younger or just a connection you had with an animal or something kind of uh, special that happened? I, I don't know if this is a good question, but. Mm, well, uh, I think so, certain, Certain profound experiences um, uh, should be, uh, because they are very often p very personal, uh, I think yeah. they also sh should be guarded uh, very. very well. So I, I want, but you know, it, it can be many things. Um, I can give you a very like uh, concrete example uh, of, of that feeling of, of uh, when things connect. Uh, when you feel like you're part of something bigger, um, whether or not it's it's your own just mm. symbolic receptors uh, that speak to you, or or if it's real, that doesn't really matter because the value it carries that's what matters. And and of course, choosing a title for the album uh, was something that was um, a very slow process for me, uh, and uh, something I'd been like thinking a lot about uh, for a long time um, and um, where I live I, I very often um, there is only uh, one flock of ravens here in this mm -hmm. area and um, they visit very regularly um, but I hadn't seen them for for a long time maybe mm -hmm. as much as three four months three four months and um, um, and so the day, um, uh, um, yeah, the, the second I, uh, when I chose the title and said, this is it, The White Raven, that's, um, that's going to be the title. The, 
uh, this was late in the evening and the first thing I, I see when I go into the studio the, the morning after is, uh, is uh, seven ravens above my roof uh, yeah. circling around and singing. So that, that was for me like a, a, right. a very nice, um, beautiful experience. Felt, mm. felt like, um, yeah, uh, I felt, felt, uh, felt like I had uh, made the right decision. You right. Know. What I find interesting then as well is because you, these, these, uh, the initial thoughts for these songs are, are conceived, as you say, through inspiration and then it, come from, it can come from anywhere. But w- once you have a kind of a, a shape in your head and, it, and you have to you take it to the studio or you take it to, to develop, uh, what is that process like then? Is, it, is that a very uh, deliberate process or are you also trying out a lot of things? I'm, I'm, um, I, I would say I'm trying out a lot of things okay. because I'm, um, um, well, uh, as you can tell from listening to my music, I, it's, it doesn't follow these normal song structures. Yeah. Uh, it's not like, uh, and I'm very conscious of not wanting to push a song into a, a predetermined shape. It's more mm-hmm. about, that process for me is more about letting the song take me where the song wants to go rather than me squeezing it into a, a de- uh, decided upon shape. Um, mm. And of course, sometimes that that uh, takes time. That takes a lot of trial and error or, or trying different things to to see what it is actually the song demands in a, in a way. Um, yeah, and, and of course, sometimes it just clicks instantly. Mm. When when this record was pretty much finished, well, what is that moment like then? When you when you went through this whole process, like you said, some some songs take years. You you, you take a lot of thought into to this music. When it's all finished, that an album process like this, what what, are, what is your what are your feelings? Or what what is your mentality at that point? Well, I I think. Uh... I think my, my experience with these things throughout the years, whether or not it's an album or, or a different kind of bubble, because mm. when, when you go into that mode, uh, in, into that space where that, this is it and it's so intense and uh, can last for a long time. And, and uh, I would say that the process of going out of that bubble uh, it can is very dual mm. in a sense. There is a sense of relief, uh, relief um, as well as a sense of grief, um, which I think is is natural. And I, I think a lot of people feel feel that thing, whether or not it's it's a creative bubble or or if it's a um, a different kind of uh, sure. things where where you have been able to be very present for a long time in that space. Um, so breaking out to that and. Uh, going out into the world again can can be um, yeah very dual. And normally, then uh, I think you would be able to play live a lot. Um, this under the current circumstances, that is not possible. Does that take an effect? Is, is the live show an, an entire new experience of that material, or is it very similar? No, performing a song is. Uh... That gives it a different shape in a way. Um, even though you've played the song, uh, but but sharing it, uh, becoming the song uh, in in a setting where you are sharing it with people, that dialogue is is a very different feeling and mm-hmm. and uh, sort of a, a different kind of initiation into the song. Um, it it becomes you uh, in yeah uh, perhaps in in. A, stronger way so, i asked this oh sorry no no i was i, I asked this of, of musicians every once in a while but i think it's particularly uh, applicable to to the type of music that you make but what what is it like for you on stage stage is it a very conscious thing or is it very uh transcendental in a way uh, I think for f- uh, it's both uh, in a way because you lose yourself. In, my philosophy is that you have to become one with 
uh, what it is you are expressing. So you are the music. It, right, it's not. Right. Uh, it's not something you cloak yourself with. It is. It is honest. It is uh, from the heart. Um, and so, so that of course demands uh, a strong, um, strong level of presence, personal presence uh, in in every song, in every note. So. Um, but uh, at the same time, the, 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 that um, when, when the song sort of rides you uh, or you ride it, um, mm. that, that, that feeling is, of course, very, um, yeah, the feeling of transcending, um, becoming one with uh, something uh, that is bigger than yourself. Um, Finally, uh, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, your work on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the yeah. uh, video game. Because, of, well, you mentioned earlier, you have all these different types of projects where you, uh, where you can find different sorts of expression, so just so it won't get stale for you. What, what was it about this particular project or, or this, this concept of, of uh, soundtracking a video game in a way or, or contributing to a video game what, what was appealing to it to you um, uh, first of all I would say it's um, it was a very ambitious uh, project not only in terms of the music which was also a very uh, ambitious uh, project but but the whole whole game um, goes very much in in depth with many things of course it, it is a uh, assassin's creed that whole universe is sure. is part fiction part uh history so that's the premise which is fine uh and and of course all um modern uh, popular cultural um expressions of the past they um they have to kind of play on on the uh, modern or contemporary notion of what that time right. is as well as the actual history you know it wouldn't be if you were supposed to do a viking game uh, very authentic it would be a lot of farming and fishing and, <laughs> and not sure. as much like epic battles you know sure. so uh, that so uh, on the uh, on one hand people are really bitching about oh it's not authentic and uh, the clothing or the weapons are right but if, if you truly ask them if they want an authentic game, I don't think they would want an authentic game. They also play into that, um, that popular notion of what that time is. So, um, so that was, I was totally fine with that, uh, with all of those things. Uh, mm. That's, a, that's a premise I can work with, but for me, the, the alluring thing was, was, uh, in the initial dialogue with the music team there. Uh, yeah, it, we had a lot of the same vision um, for, for what my part would be. And, okay. and uh, that part allowed me to, um, to give voice to, to um, the Skaldic tradition or, or the oral tradition, which in many ways lay, laid at the, the heart of the Norse society uh, at that time. And, and so being able to give, give voice to that tradition is something I uh, think is important and, and valuable and interesting um so yeah it's it's been a very fun fun project to be part of yeah, it's a, i find it very interesting how history is remembered because like you say that uh, it, it is an oral tradition especially if we go far as far back as then it's, it's an oral tradition but i mean people uh sat around campfires telling stories and, and that's how the tradition uh, carried on but now we are in this this multi uh media age, uh, digital age. Um, how do you think this will affect how we remember uh, certain elements of our cultural past? Of course it affects but certain things, you know, it's, it's almost impossible for us to even fathom um, uh, the impact of, of words and poetry and mm. stories and songs uh, in, in our modern world because we are so bombarded with it and, and we don't really, it's not often we truly connect to these things. Um, uh, it more goes through us because we're mm. so used to it and, and uh, um, 
the effect of that. I don't know. Uh, Maybe it's too early to say. I don't know. Yeah, it's too too early to say. But uh, of course, it, it's just different. I, right. It's just different. It's a it's a completely different way of relating to it. It's much more. We we consume uh, enormous amounts of culture all sure. the time. Uh, so um, so you can't really compare um i guess there are plus and and minuses with with both things but um the value of being able to connect with uh with a way uh with this kind of uh, yeah i would really love to uh, to experience that at some point but i think it's impossible to, for us to truly understand what that meant uh, right. unfortunately mm. and thank you so much Nokia. my pleasure All right, bye-bye.